How to get multifamily real estate data from LoopNet. A multifamily home is a single building that's divided to accommodate more than one family living separately. This can be a duplex or even a hundred unit apartment complex. For residential multifamily buildings with four units or less, we can typically find them on sites like Zillow. But what if we want to find data on large apartment complexes? We can get this information from sites like LoopNet. In this video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide to get multifamily listings in any city. We will use web scraping with absolutely no code. My name is Ariel Herrera, your fellow data scientist with the Analytics Ariel channel, where we bridge the gap between real estate and technology. I am passionate about providing data solutions, so follow my channel to get the latest content of real estate analytics. And stay tuned to the end where I provide you a preview on how we get property details automatically into a spreadsheet. All right, let's get started. LoopNet is an online marketplace for commercial property. It primarily focuses on commercial property listings for sale and for lease in the United States. It is currently owned by commercial property data company, CoStar. The way to use LoopNet is to enter in the property type you're interested in and then enter your location to see all of the listings. We're going to actually extract the listings into a spreadsheet automatically using Browse AI. What is Browse AI? Browse AI is a web automation software that learns to perform data extraction, monitoring, and automation tasks on the web simply by observing someone perform the actions just once. Browse AI records your actions as you move through a web page. It can scrape many sites, including social media, county information, real estate websites, and more. Browse AI has a free amount of credits per month. Use the link below to receive a 10% off if you later sign up for a plan. Here, I will click log in since I already have an account. At the homepage of Browse AI, we have two options, browse pre-built robots and build a new robot. Now, if you see my prior videos, I've shown how to actually use the pre-built robots to get Zillow data. But for our use case, these larger commercial properties will not show up on Zillow. Therefore, we're going to use build a new robot for LoopNet. Here we have two options, extract structured data and monitor site changes. In our case, we just wanna get all of the data into a spreadsheet. We don't care as of yet if we want to monitor for new listings or not. So let's select the first one. Next, we enter in our origin URL. If we go back to LoopNet, and we copy LoopNet's URL, we could then paste it into the space here. Next, we start recording our task. We now see a pop-up box and Browse AI is telling us that it is now going to record all of our actions. We only need to do this once and Browse AI will then be able to get data for us. So let's select OK Understood. Now we're going to select the property type that we care about, in this case, multifamily. Next, we're going to enter a location, which is going to be Phoenix, Arizona. Next, you're going to click search. Next, you're going to see on LoopNet's homepage, two different views. On the left-hand side, we could see all the multifamily properties that are currently for sale. And on the right-hand side, we get the detail of these apartment listings. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we could see here that we have 87 listings in total. What we're going to do next is select Browse AI on the top right hand corner. Then we're going to click Capture List. This is going to allow us to capture all of our listings. All we need to do is hover over one of the listings and then click our mouse. Here, our next step is to select which fields we care about. So if you hover over the first one, which is Street, it's going to ask us if we want to capture the text, the link, or the title. In this case, we're gonna capture each one. So let's start with the text, then we're going to click back to street, get the link, and then get the title. Next, we're going to select the city, price, cap rate, and the size of the apartment building. Once complete, we're going to click enter to finish. Now we could name each of our fields.
Once we enter in all of our fields, we then see a captured list. This looks like a spreadsheet. We have a row for each listing, and the information that we contain is street, the unique link, title, city, price, cap rate, and apartment size. Now we can name our list. Next, Browse AI needs to know, is there more data to extract? In this case, there is. So we're going to click on Next to navigate to the next page. I'm going to select the second page right here. And our last step is to set what our maximum number of rows we want to extract. Here, I'm going to go for a custom number and set this to 40. Now I can capture the list. We just showed Browse AI how to capture a list for us automatically and how to get that data into a spreadsheet. We can click OK Understood and we've completed our task. So let's click Browse AI and click Finish Recording. We have two quick steps to do next. First, name our robot, which in this case, I'm going to leave it as the default and click Save. Now we're going to view our results. In order to do this, the robot is going to run our task on a cloud server. What that means is that we are not actually running this task locally on our machines. This is being done on a server elsewhere, and it's going to simulate our actions that we just took, such as clicking the listings, getting all of our fields that we care about, and it's going to present us a view as to what the results will be each time the web scraper is run. Once the robot is complete, you'll see all of your data in one spot. We could see that we have street, link, title, city, price, cap rate, and apartment size. These first two rows don't have the data that we expect because these were the advertisement apartment complexes. However, we do get the remaining 40 items, which was our cap that we wanted to extract. And if we go down to the bottom, we could see the final screenshot that Browse AI took, as well as all the steps that it was able to replicate. Now we can select yes, looks good. At the home page of our bot, we could now run a task. In my scenario, I actually had a pause when I was typing out Phoenix, Arizona. Therefore, I have two separate locations, so I'll have to recreate my bot just to fix this. But in your use case, you should just have three different parameters here, the origin URL, the location, and your limit. You'll be able to put in different cities and run the task as is, and you'll be able to receive a spreadsheet of the listings. Now, how do you actually view these listings? If you go over to history, every time you have a successful run, you'll be able to click on that and view that spreadsheet. You could then download it to a CSV. You could also monitor for a particular city so that you get alerts or you have new rows to your spreadsheet every time there is a new listing. Now, what's really exciting is being able to integrate your bot with other applications. For example, if you wanted to set it up that every time the spot is run, you could have this go straight into Google Sheets and you could add your own formulas to automatically analyze your deal. One of the limitations that we did have with our data is that even though we have listings, we don't actually have the property detail. If we look at this first example here, 1402 W Polk Street, we get information on the price, number of units, square footage, when it was built, and some notes as well. But if we click here, we could see there's a lot more information. We have investment highlights, executive summary, some that's actually shaded unless we go pro, and the part that we really want, which is property facts. In the next video, I'll show you how to get this as well using Browse AI. And in part three, we'll be able to consolidate this whole package, either using Zapier or Python programming so that we can automatically get listings and get property detail for each of these listings. Please leave comments below on how you extract data for commercial real estate properties. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks.